Hi gang. Right, so we're at a pivotal point in our history of the best historical Games Workshop game, as we've covered everything in the original releases. But Necromunda was really popular, and outside of the main releases, loads of extra material was written. So this time we're going to dive into the various Necromunda magazines, and I'm going to pick four of my favourite examples as an illustration. So before we start, it's worth saying that there were a fair few publications issuing extra material for Necromunda over the course of its life, and Games Workshop had a habit of splitting them up and recombining them as the game moved between departments. When the game first came out, additional material was published right in the most prominent place, in White Dwarf magazine, and some of it was really fun, particularly for me, but by Outlanders all the fun stuff had started to appear in the Citadel Journal, a fantastic little bi-monthly book made by Games Workshop's mail order trolls containing barely formatted ideas submitted by random Games Workshop staff and fans. In 1999 the Necromunda concept was siphoned off into a magazine called Gang War, which ran for six issues until August 2000 and published a host of new content, as well as a load of reprints of Citadel Journal stuff. And then this magazine was replaced by another called Necromunda Magazine, which ran all the way up to the release of Necromunda Underhive, the second edition of the game, in 2003. And it mostly concentrated on expanding the setting out into the Mad Max style world of the Ash Wastes. More on that later. So in just the first edition of the game, we're looking at additional content in four different magazines, each one reprinting bits of the last one with slightly better formatting each time. Yeah, it turns out Necromunda's always been a bit of a mess. The point here is that Necromunda was always way bigger than just the official books, and tons of extra content was released in these formats. So just as a taste, here's four of my favourites. Okay, points to everyone who knew this would be my first pick. Hi ho, hi ho, it's Squat Minor Gangs by Phil Tortorici from Gang War 4 in 2000. Of course the squats would make it to Necromunda, or in the case of these photos, Warhammer Fantasy Dwarf Miners. As expected, they're basically a slower, tougher version of the standard leader, ganger and juve, except they're resilient like the Ratskins, and have nerves of steel due to spending all their time in dangerous mine workings. They also ignore encumbrance penalties for carrying around heavy weapons, which is pretty good. But unlike a normal gang, they're squats, so they're obviously like way better and jollier. As expected, they really, really like mining. If they beat you and will be able to steal a territory from you, they automatically steal your mine workings, and when they work that, they earn double the normal amount. If you don't have one of those, they'll also accept other squatty locations like architect hordes or workshops. And if they have to find one in the waste, they tend to aim for the same sorts of thing. Sources of raw materials, equipment workshops, you know, that sort of thing. They also get a slightly customised outlaw trade table that gives them access to old prospectors maps. They get a few bits of fun mining equipment, like demo charges which can be used as booby traps, shovels and picks, sonic cleansers which can be used to knock down other gangers, and some new armour, the chain jack, or um, yeah, chain mail, which I think is just there to make all those Warhammer Fantasy Dwarf minor models usable. Look, it's basically a silly attempt to get some stupid old prospector jokes into the game, and in a setting as obviously Wild West as Necromunda, it works really well. I could totally see them bringing these back. Especially when you look at what's next. This is the biggest expansion to Necromunda that was never actually an expansion. The Ash Wastes. Originally printed in the Citadel Journal, the Ash Waste Nomads Gang was a really popular expanded gang. The remnants of the once great house Catalyst exiled to the wastes and forced to live as desert nomads. Essentially these were a variant house gang with specialities in stealth and in sniping. The main differences between the Nomads and the other gangs was their outlander status, their long rifles, and their unique Ash Waste territory, which bypassed the normal territory rules but gave them much better scavenging income. However, over the issues, Necromunda magazine massively expanded on this and formed the Ash Wastes into an entire setting, which might give us a glimpse of what's coming in Necromunda in 2022. These expanded setting rules included a new selection of gangs. Shantytown gangs were the militia formed to defend the ramshackle settlements clustered around the hive, and sort of fulfilled the role of scavvies, cheap, unskilled fighters with low-tech weapons and their own dubious territory table full of sludge traps and moisture farms. Hive prospector teams were technically proficient teams of engineers and servitors, or maybe dwarf miners, who knows? And finally, journeymen were gangs of hired muscle that guarded the guild convoys as they travelled across the wastes, including goons, mercenaries and outriders, and it's here we get the biggest change to the game in the Ash Waste rules. 
vehicles. The Ashway setting included an incredibly flexible vehicle system. Not only rules for using them on the tabletop, but an extensive, almost rogue trader-like vehicle design system. You could build anything from a bike to a heavily armored transport, from crawlers to skimmers, which could then engage in different sorts of Mad Max style wasteland combat transport your gang, or be used as land ships to conduct boarding actions. The rules here from 1999 are like considerably more detailed than say the Gorka Morka rules, which I think came out earlier, presumably just because the vehicle design rules were way more flexible. And alongside the vehicles, we got rules for the Ash Waste Beasties, where you could come up with all sorts of weird and wonderful creatures for your gang to ride, and then stick a harpoon gun on them. There's loads here, additional higher guns, new scenarios, a complete alternate Necromunda if you wanted it to be. You could play this without a single house gang or underhive outlander gang present. Reading through it now, it'll be really interesting to see how much of this is reused in the new expansion. Right, for my third choice I've gone a bit smaller, The Hive Ken Skills by Lachlan Abrahams from one of the original Citadel Journal articles. Ever wondered if your slowly progressing under Hive gangers would actually get more at home down at Hive Bottom? Well, the Hive Ken Skills were a way of representing the sort of local knowledge and survival skills an underhiver might realistically acquire, or the sorts of jobs they might have had before becoming a ganger. If your ganger manages to roll the select any skill result on an advance, that's the best one, they could learn a new profession from gigantic spider hunter to giant rat herder or explorer. Each came with a skill, usually something that generated equipment, and some sort of unique tool of the trade. Want your gangers to open a wild snake distillery or farm orb spiders for their webs and turn them into grenades? What about becoming a home stinger mold enthusiast? Or even the classic underhive skill of just being nosy. Learn to be a rumor monger and spread rumors about all the other gangs so they're not welcome at the trading post anymore. Finally, the most common new material for Necromunda was always scenarios. They're just such an obvious way of changing up the game and loads were printed across all the magazines. But for my fourth choice, I'm picking Necromovies by Gary James. Arbitrating a campaign with a gang that's just too powerful? Well, why don't they come up against the Predator? Our intrepid gang set up on one side of the table and have to chase down and kill the Predator in the Underhive, that's a Malkadon Spira with 19 upgrades, who causes intense fear and can blend into the background when still. And they're on a mission to hunt down as many gangers as possible and take them as trophies. Or maybe you want a more cerebral Arnie experience in Total Recall. This is a standard gang fight scenario with the addition of rules for a double agent in one of the gangs, and with the entire game revolving around a ventilation plant on the board controlled by a deck of playing cards. Will there be enough air this turn? Not if you draw an even number red card. There are loads more like this. Want to play some Western scenarios and a fistful of credits? Or fight a swamp thing in The Shambles? And this is just a selection of what was published. How about the return of brat gangs from Confrontation? Or hiring the intrepid archaeotechnologist Laura Craft, definitely showing its 90s-ness there, or running a gang full of orcs or vampires. The various Necromunda magazines were treasure troves full of silly ideas, fun scenarios, and really show how flexible and fun the game was intended to be. And loads of this content was then modified and reprinted as Necromunda moved forward. Necromunda magazine was cancelled in 2003, around the same time as the release of Underhive, but the successor, Fanatic magazine, and later Fanatic Online, kept loads of these articles current and reprinted them for the new rule set. If you want to have a deeper look, loads of these articles can be found on Yak Tribe in their Vault section. Next time we'll go back to the standard format and look at the second edition of Necromunda, Underhive and how it affects the Springsteens. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to follow this extremely infrequent series, you can start right at the beginning with Confrontation just there on the right, or click the usual YouTube buttons to like and subscribe. See ya!